the World Health Organization declared glyphosate a probable human carcinogen. Please explain exactly what they said and what the significance of that was. IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, is the top agency in the world to determine what is, causes cancer and what doesn't. And they get a bunch of independent scientists, they hand them out all of the research data, they study it on their own, they meet and they convene and they discuss and then they categorize. And they determined that glyphosate, the chief poison in Roundup, is a class 2A carcinogen. It means it's a probable human carcinogen. Now why wasn't it definitely a carcinogen? Because there wasn't enough human studies. There was enough animal studies and they said it definitely causes cancer in animals. Definitely in animals, probably in humans. And it causes genotoxicity and oxidative stress, which can cause the damage to the DNA, which can cause the cancer. And if you look at where it's been sprayed, there's higher levels of cancer. So they look at epidemiological and animal feeding studies and this causation of what happens in the cell, genotoxicity. In all three cases, there was evidence that it causes cancer. Since then, we now know that it can reduce the ability of cells to communicate with each other. It's called gap junctions. And it reduces it in one study, not yet published, by 50%. That's a well-known causal pathway leading to cancer. We also know, and I don't know if this is published yet, that it damages the structural integrity of cells. And what can happen is it can destroy the mitochondria. And people can see it in a microscope. And there are many uh, researchers who believe that cancer is a mitochondrial disease. So when you destroy the mitochondria, you might end up with cancer, but it's also linked to lifespan and many other diseases, brain fog, fatigue, etc. So there are many reasons why glyphosate probably causes cancer. Now, there was a study done after the World Health Organization's committee did their research that looked at, they looked at mouse cells, and they put in glyphosate, was breast cancer, and it did not multiply the breast cancer cells until they added another uh, substance which is found in every human being. Then it multiplied. So on its own, it wasn't multiplying, but when they were added a substance to the mix, then it was multiplying. And glyphosate, or the use of Roundup in the United States, is correlated as it increases. It's correlated with the same slope of increase in many different types of cancers, liver, kidney, uh, bladder cancer, leukemia, breast cancer. And if you look at dogs, they have the highest cancer rate of any mammal, one out of every 1.6. The amount of glyphosate in their urine is 40 times that of humans because there's such a certain amount in their pet food and that's all they eat is the pet food over and over again, the dog food, and it contains a high level of glyphosate. That's not, not even counting what's picked up by their paws. And we believe that the cancer epidemic, which came very recently, after GMOs were introduced, is because of glyphosate. In fact, I've interviewed many veterinarians who said, before then, it was a very rare occurrence, maybe one in a month. Now it's several times per day, along with other specific symptoms that we link to glyphosate and GMOs in dog food. Cats are also have a high level of cancer. And remember what the World Health Organization's committee said. It does cause cancer in animals. Is there glyphosate in our drinking water? And if so, how would it get in the water? Glyphosate is airborne. By the time it's sprayed so often and so much in the fields in the Midwest and the West, it ends up in the air, in the rain, and in the surface water and the groundwater. It's water soluble. Now, there have been tests of tap water, and they found glyphosate in some of them, not most. It's in so much food, but is not as popular or not as frequently found in the water supply. What does that mean for, for you individually? I don't know, because if you have it, you're drinking it every day and you're bathing in it. And, for, un, and fortunately, there are filters that can filter it out. How do we get Roundup out of our body? Roundup is water soluble. Most of it is, goes out with the urine but some goes to the organs, and some goes, ends up in the bone. And some of that is gone out of the body within two weeks. 
and some remains. So if you simply stop exposing yourself to Roundup, then the amount in your urine should drop dramatically and the amount that's built up in your tissues should start to release, but that doesn't mean you're going to be 100% off the hook. There's a lot of theories about what to do to release the Roundup from the body and also how to repair and rebuild the body after its exposure. I'm not an expert at that. And people ask me the question, what more can I do besides eating organic? And I used to say, it's above my pay grade. And I wasn't qualified to answer the question. But I'm way overqualified to ask the questions, and I did that to 18 experts. And I have an online course called Healing from GMOs and Roundup, which you can find at healingfromgmos.com, where I ask the question. And some people talk about the detoxification of the liver and how to bolster that with either supplements, and some people talk about certain foods. We know that the liver detoxification mechanism is partly disabled because glyphosate damages a particular pathway. It also can damage the NRF2 uh, pathway, which helps the cells detox all over the body. So it's like the king of toxins. When you have glyphosate, all the other toxins that are inhibited in terms of their release can be damaging the body. So you really want to figure out how to detox. So some of these people use saunas, some of these people use uh, diets, some of these people use supplements. And I'm not going to condense it and try and say what's the best because it's above my pay grade. So I'll just say take a look at healingfromgmos.com and see for yourself.